Hello and welcome to worship for the 18th of October and the 30th Sunday of Ordinary Time. In the church we often find it difficult to talk about money. If we bring it up in church council people are anxious whether they've got enough particularly for property works. When we talk about it in church everybody tends to look down and thinks that they aren't doing as well as they should. And at the moment our church treasurers are looking at the bank balances of many of the chapels and wondering how they're going to make ends meet. In the gospel story today Jesus is confronted by the Pharisees who question him about coins and what to do with money. Let's see what he has to say not only to them but also to us. So welcome to worship. Let us praise God. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. We worship God who loves us and inspires our love for others. From Psalm 96 Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing to the Lord all the world. Sing to the Lord and praise him. Proclaim every day the good news that he has saved us. Proclaim his glory to the nations, his mighty deeds to all peoples. The Lord is great and is to be highly praised. Glory and majesty surround him, power and beauty fill his temple. Praise the Lord, all people on earth. Praise his glory and might. Praise the Lord's glorious name. Bring an offering and come into his temple. Bow down before the Holy One when he appears. Tremble before him, all the earth.
we offer our prayers to God. First, a prayer of adoration. We praise you, wonderful God, for your wisdom. You have given us laws for life, which are set out for the good of all. You have given us your love for life, so that we may enjoy life in all its fullness. Your wisdom is wiser than ours, your laws greater than any human law, your love stronger than any human love. In Jesus you have set us a supreme example to follow. By the Spirit you have given us the strength to obey. Creator God, may our lives be lived in righteousness as an example to all. Amen. And a prayer of confession. Great God, we know that a righteous life is not just a matter of obeying the right rules, following the laws of the land. A godly life means we have to love you and love our neighbours. We ask for your forgiveness, for the many times we have broken your commands, when we have put ourselves before others, when we have followed our own way and not yours, when our love for others has been feeble and we have not expressed our love for you. Forgive us, renew us, Fill us with your Spirit, so that we can acknowledge that we live under your authority and that you are the only Lord of our lives. Then everyone will say, What a wise and understanding people the Church is, and come to know you as the Lord their God. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah chapter 45, verses 1 to 11. The Lord has chosen Cyrus to be king. He has appointed him to conquer nations. He sends him to strip kings of their power. The Lord will open the gates of cities for him. To Cyrus the Lord says, I myself will prepare your way, levelling mountains and hills. I will break down bronze gates and smash their iron bars. I will give you treasures from dark, secret places. Then you will know that I am the Lord, and the God of Israel has called you by name. I appoint you to help my servant Israel, the people that I have chosen. I have given you great honour, although you do not know me. I am the Lord, There is no other God. I will give you the strength you need, although you do not know me. I do this so that everyone, from one end of the world to the other, may know that I am the Lord, and that there is no other God. I create both light and darkness. I bring both blessing and disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. I will send victory from the sky like rain. The earth will open to receive it and will blossom with freedom and justice. I, the Lord, will make this happen. Does a clay pot dare argue with its maker? A pot that is like all the others? Does the clay ask the potter what he is doing? Does the pot complain that its maker has no skill? Do we dare say to our parents, Why did you make me like this? The Lord, the Holy God of Israel, the one who shapes the future, says, You have no right to question me about my children, or to tell me what I ought to do. I am the one who made the earth, and created human beings to live there. By my power I stretched out the heavens, I control the sun, the moon, and the stars. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. The Pharisees went off and made a plan to trap Jesus with questions. Then they sent to him some of their disciples and some members of Herod's party. Teacher, they said, we know that you tell the truth. You teach the truth about God's will for people without worrying about what others think, because you pay no attention to anyone's status. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it against our law to pay taxes to the Roman emperor, or not? Jesus, however, was aware of their evil plan, and so he said, You hypocrites, why are you trying to trap me? Show me the coin for paying the tax. They brought him the coin, and he asked them, Whose face and name are these? The emperor's, they answered. So Jesus said to them, Well then, pay to the emperor what belongs to the emperor, and pay to God what belongs to God. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. If I'm looking a little less stressed today, it may just be because I have completed my income tax self-assessment for the year 2019-2020. And so I'm very aware of money issues this week. Similarly, I know that church and circuit treasurers have been working hard to finalise their chapel accounts for the last year. During this pandemic, there have been definite winners and losers. The winners, as always seems to be true, are the big investors, the one who have, the ones who have money make more money. And the losers... Well, we know them too well. Those who have been made redundant, who have lost their jobs because COVID has forced their workplace to close or there is literally nothing for them to do. But for many people, the situation is much more complex. There have been people who have spent less on holidays, on travel to work, on meals out. But at the same time, they might have been furloughed or have been working from home. And so they've only got 80% or, at the end of this month, only 60% of their usual wage. So the question that is asked in the Gospel today, what do we give to Caesar and what do we give to God, is very relevant. In the story, the Pharisees were again seeking to catch Jesus out. They asked him a question that they thought was going to cause him to condemn himself by his reply. But of course, as usual, Jesus gets the better of them by taking their coin and metaphorically putting it back into their pocket and saying to them, you decide where it ought to go. It is actually quite a challenge to them. Have they been too actively involved in supporting the Roman economy looking after their own interests, feathering their nests, rather than focusing on the work of God and what their offering should be in the temple. It reminds me of that old joke about the church treasurer who goes to the church council meeting and says, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is we have enough money to pay all our bills and some left over for the mission of the church. The bad news is, it's still in your bank account. Every day, we potentially face questions about how to spend our money. And it doesn't matter whether you're mega rich or super poor, money can be a source of anxiety. Because we all have choices, what we do with the money over which we have control. If we're rich, those choices may be easier to make in some ways, 
which car am I going to buy? Where am I going to go on holiday? It may also be, how do I look amongst my friends? What status do I want to have? But if we're poor, it can be a more serious matter. It can be a choice between food on the table or roof over our heads. Or even between food for my children or food for me. In these more unusual times, you may have received a series of begging letters from charities, from theatres, from tourist attractions, all of them asking for money to help them cope without their usual takings from visitors, without their usual income from fundraising. Churches too have not been exempt from anxiety, though it seems that our offerings have generally kept up across the circuit. Many places have lost out from the lack of income, from lettings, from bookings, but also from those opportunities for fundraising, even the humble coffee morning or the sale of work. But if we're honest, that's not really addressing the question that Jesus faced and certainly not the answer that he gives. How we spend our money is but a detail in the more significant question about who do we owe and what? What debt do we have? I pay my income tax and VAT because I benefit from government supported activities such as the health service. It's hard to put a value on that currently, isn't it? It could be the difference between life and death for some people, even for me. But it is God who gives us our material wealth. He is the creator of all things. He's placed us into this world. And although we might pride ourselves on our hard work and graft, if we're honest, we've been given far more than we've ever worked for. And the truth is, we can't truly repay the debt that we owe God. God who has given us so much, God who has done so much for us. The salvation offered through the gift of the Son is a debt we can never repay. And actually, God doesn't ask us to. God gives free grace, asking nothing more of us, save than I love God and love my neighbour as I love myself. Listen more to that in next week's reading. We cannot repay the debt we owe, to quote the more modern song. In the Isaiah reading, the prophet is contemplating the work of a potter. Watching a potter shaping a pot out of clay is always an interesting, somewhat captivating event. Do you remember that old time fellow on the television? when people would sit in front of it and just watch the potter's hands smoothing the clay and creating that wonderful pot. To paraphrase the Isaiah reading, can a clay pot ever truly recompense the potter for creating it? The potter might sell the pot, but even the value that they get is probably nothing to the heartache and the hard work that's gone into its creation. So what about our relationship with God? God shapes us out of clay, out of the dust of the earth, and gives us life, and gives us life eternal, if we but love him and love others as we love ourselves. We don't have to find vast amounts of money to get into the kingdom of heaven but we do have to acknowledge what we owe to God. But thankfully, he gives us the wherewithal to pay it back. Thanks be to God. Amen.
we offer our prayers of intercession. And in these prayers, there is a response. When I say glorious God, we say together, we will worship you alone. So let us pray. God of majesty, your glory and power fill the earth and the heavens. You are the giver of every good thing, worthy of all worship and praise. We pray that we may offer you our worship through the things that we do, turning aside from the idols of power, wealth and success, May we worship you by pursuing freedom, justice and opportunities for all. At this time of pandemic, we pray for the leaders of the nations, that in their decision-making they might be guided by your wisdom and concern for all your children. Glorious God, we we will will worship worship you alone. alone. We pray that we may worship you in the things that we say, turning aside from the idols of popularity, conformity and cynicism. May we worship you by speaking of goodness, forgiveness and love. At this time of worry and anxiety about the coming days, may we by our words offer comfort to the sick, fearful, or lonely. Glorious God, we we will worship worship you alone. alone. We pray that we may worship you by being the people that you call us to be, turning aside from the idols of appearance, cleverness, and self. May we worship you by leading lives radiant, with humble, self-giving love. Glorious God, we We will will worship worship you alone. alone. We pray that we may worship you in every part of our lives, for everything belongs to you, creating, sustaining, life-giving God. Glorious God, we We will will worship worship you you alone. In the name of Jesus, who by his life, death and rising again, revealed the true glory of God. Amen. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy Thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen.
We brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out. You, Lord, have made us stewards of all we possess. May we prove trustworthy in handling our material wealth, so that we may be blessed with the riches of heaven. And may the blessings of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be ours today and always. Amen.